time we come here, every the words time, are. Every time. There's no words that can explain this really. And I, again, I'm so glad to, to be here, to be part of this church. And uh, at times, I, the grace of love is the best medicine you can have. In, in the past, maybe I would try to find that uh, distraction going out, going to parties, but the only peace you can find is in this place, the joy, the peace that surpasses all understanding, it doesn't matter your age, it doesn't matter your gender, this is really the house of God and the, the water flows in this place, the flows of water come here, when we need that water, when, when I came here and also I was irritated, at times as even I feel in my body, I, had a little injury, so in the past I would exercise, but I was just physical release. But your really, your real spiritual release is in this place. The it's just a, a peace that you feel inside, and now I feel good. I, I was irritated, and just like the sister said it before, and you come here and you feel so much better, and just like Brother Moore mentioned about the grace, and I, I'm just gonna say it very briefly. I, uh, uh, we don't know how much we can get from 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 God, from the Lord, coming to this house and filling our spirit. There's so many people outside that they have never received that message. And I, in the past, I, I traveled, I, I got out of my comfort zone and I went teaching to other places. I went very far to another country, I went to Ecuador. And I remember on my third day over there, I was filled with the spirit from this church. I took a plane and I went to Miami and then it was like my second and the third day in that country, I was living in a, in a very cold place by the mountains in Ecuador, and then I was just walking by in the downtown of that city, it's called Ambato, and then a uh, very poor place, a lot of in, indigenous people, and as I was walking by the courthouse, they would have this lady in this uh, table, she had a typewriter, she would type letters for poor people that couldn't afford uh, to have a computer, and they would, like legal documents, so I started talking to her, and then she was really nice, and uh, she was, we were talking in Spanish, and she told me that her son was an alcoholic, and she had this very, very, very difficult life, and uh, she, she was so sweet, and she, she treated me like, a, I don't know, like a, she would know me for a long time, and that was our f first conversation, and I, I am an imperfect, imperfect person, but through Jesus, you can, he can use an imperfect person to reach another person, so, I had never, I never did it before, but I was filled with the spirit from Bradenton Gospel Tabernacle. Again, I was, I had just left. It was about a year and a half ago. So I said, "Can I, can I pray for you?" I told this woman, this unknown person, and then because I, I didn't know really what to do because she was so sad. So I just placed my hand, my, my hand on her shoulder, and I said, "Praying." I closed my eyes, I said, "Praying." I, I said, "Jesus, give her peace inside, heal her son, and so forth." And then when I opened my eye, I, I saw four other people there. And they weren't curious, they were just pedestrians and they told me, can you please pray for me too? And I didn't know what to do, I, I am so imperfect, but then there was something there and I, I said, God, I don't know what to do. They were asking me that I'm so imperfect to pray for them. And then I said, God, help me, I don't know what to do. And so. I started praying for, that, for another person that told me again, very difficult circumstances, those people are very poor and then they're abandoned by the society, so they were sick, they were, the, their children, most of them suffering from drug and uh, alcohol. And so I prayed for that person too, I closed my eyes, I started praying for this other person that came and then when I opened my eyes, there were about 10 people there. <laughs> and I was, it was so beautiful. And again, I, I just couldn't believe it. And then I, they told me, please, can you pray for me? And they, they went, well, finally, when I left, they told me, please, do you have a phone number? Are you a, a preacher? And then I told them, no, no, I, I'm just, I came here to teach. And I'm about to please give us a card, a number. And then I, I, I felt, I didn't really didn't know what to do. So I realized that. There is so much need in this world for Jesus. There is so much need for yes, yes. this place should be filled to the top with people because the need of, of love is tremendous. I have seen it as a teacher traveling when I went to New Mexico. Uh, after that, very briefly, I uh, 
I was in a city called Gallup in, in Arizona, right before I came to the church, and then it was, it's very cold over there in the nice desert, it's really a desert in Arizona. And then I was always talking to Brother Marlo, Brother Marlo, uh, I'm getting close to bread, so I was so happy about it. In that time, I, I saw three Indian people in that reservation, and they, uh, I was traveling, and then I was going back to my hotel, and they tapped on my shoulder, I was getting out of my car, and they told me, hey, do you, I thought that they were going to ask me for money, but this woman, Navajo woman, older lady, she tell, told me, I'm very cold, so you have a sweater. And then I just got into my car, and I had a sweater, and I gave it to her. And then I saw them, they, they were very poor. They, they would smell alcohol a little bit, so <laughs> probably they weren't drinking. But then I told them, have you eaten? Do you want to eat something? And then we went to a McDonald's right next to, to the hotel. It was a super great hotel in Gallup, Arizona. And then um, there was a man right there, two women and one Navajo man, very tall. And he was really nice, and he was maybe 50 years old. He was very tall, he had big hands, and he told me my name, I still remember, my name is Bean, Bean Smith, but they call me Bigfoot. I'm a Navajo, and he was, he told me about his life as an iron worker, because that's what Indians do, they would build all these buildings. And then finally he told me that uh, he told me that he was homeless and he really wasn't traveling anywhere like he told me he was homeless and I told him where are you going to sleep tonight? He told me I'm going to sleep under a bridge so I take care of these two sisters. He would call them sisters. And finally I, he was a very good man and I told him where's your family and this Navajo man broke down in tears and he started crying. This strong man, he started crying in front of me and Again, I, I didn't know what to do, an unknown person crying in the middle of the desert. And then I said, God, what do you want me to do? I, I, I don't know what to do. And then I, God told me, just pray for him. And I told him, do you want me to pray for you? And I started praying for that person. I said, God, bless this man. Give him joy. Give him a word so he can get out of living on the streets. And, and uh, this man, he, he just broke down in tears and crying. So <clears throat> I'm just telling all this story because... The need of Jesus is tremendous in this world. We are so blessed. Even though our illnesses, our difficulties, physically, emotionally, mentally, we have a church. We have a blessing. We have a joy. This wonderful church. But there are so many people out there that even here in Bradenton, that how many times have we met persons that they ask you, so what are you doing the weekends? No, I go to church. What we church? Bradenton, God, small tabernacle. Oh, that church in Manatee is Manatee. And they tell you, I've been there so many times, but I had never gone into that church. So I had a dream when I was coming here from New Mexico, and I told Brother Marlo, I don't want to extend myself. I, I thought about how we can become warriors, how we can become soldiers. I remember Brother Marlo a few weeks ago said he himself had to go and take the van and bring people here. So Brother Marlo has a lot of things to do on his shoulder, so I got into the computer about <clears throat> a week ago, I had never done this before, and I said, Jesus, how can we bring more people to the church? And then I thought about this, and I, I got in front of the computer, I never did it, and I created this card, you know, I, I made it like about a thousand of these cards, and if the brothers can help me, I we're gonna pass them very briefly now to the to the church. It's a it's a this is a simple card, an invitation. It's a key. It's a key for the people that they have never known about Jesus. They have never known about this church. And you give them this key and these wonderful testimonies that we give here. We can give it to the people outside, and then we give this card that says, "Who can transform hate into love? Who can heal without medicine?" You know, we have that beautiful example about, about brother, a brother Dean, yeah. who gives you everything without asking anything. And then it says in the in the front, it says, "His name is Jesus." His name is Jesus. I can't hear you. His name is Jesus. Jesus. So he's waiting for you. So I just wanna uh, encourage all of us. So if we can give all these cards, maybe within two or three weeks, yeah. and then. A person and a known person in a, in a bus stop, in your job, and in the hospital, in the Manatee Memorial Hospital, and we just pass this car through all the city, and we invade the city with the love of Jesus Christ.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. These are beautiful witnesses, Father. And uh, you want some? Hold your hand up.